here to introduce to you my sister, Sarah Swafford. She is the founder of Emotional Virtue Ministries and is a proud member of ChastityProject.com. She has a beautiful family that she'll be talking about soon. So let's give her a warm welcome. did Jason ever tell you, right? Like, I wasn't in that talk, but I could hear you guys cheering from backstage upstairs. So I was like, he's nailing it, but isn't he great? He is the man. So I am really excited you guys all came. I was hoping like 20 guys would show up, but then I realized I was talking about girls and sex and I was like, they're all going to show up. It's going to be great. <laughs> Um, just kidding. Um, I'm really excited to be with you guys. I, I, I think some of you, I was so worried. I told my husband before I came on, I was like, I hope they don't hate me because Steve and I are so competitive. It's all about me winning against Steve. And I'm like, the only time the guys see me, I'm like calling smack all the time. I'm like, they probably think I'm such a jerk. So anyway, mad love for all the men in here, right? I just, my, my MC. My emceeing with the 5,000 women upstairs, right? So, so I've been praying for you. I've been thinking about you guys a lot. I can't see you on the sync feed, but I know you're there. So, and I can hear you. <laughs> As you boo our answers, I can hear you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, Jason and I were talking about what to title this. And so there was a school that had some shirts that said off the hook. Um, and basically their entire um, kind of like ministry was trying to like bring awareness to the hookup culture, right? And um, so we titled this off the hook because I don't know about you, but I'm, like I said, I'm this 31 year old mom that just sits at home and thinks about what, like how, I don't even know how you guys are gonna, like how do you do it? Like the dating scene right now is just so messed up. Amen? And I don't know, I, I even talked, you know, you, you can't even go to your dads and say, dad, like, do you have any advice for this? Because your dad did not have a phone when he dated his, your mom or whatever, you know what I mean? His girlfriends. I mean, it's all, the phone has changed dating forever. Social media and texting has just completely changed it, amen? And so I call it 21st century dating, and I want to do like the state of 21st century dating. And part of, I, you know, sometimes you have to lay out the problem to get to the answer, right? So what I want to talk about first is just how did we get into this mess, you know? And not and on top of that, like, how the heck are we going to get out of it? And so when I talk about 21st century dating, it's, it's pretty, pretty awful because what it really is is, I, this is what I hear from a lot of guys. One of my favorite things to do is I inter do interviews with guys. It's very helpful. I make like a ton of food, like hot wings and chili and a lot of desserts. And guys come over to my house and we sit around my kitchen island and I have a piece of paper and I'm just, I just ask questions and it's awesome. I learn a lot. And um, one of the things that I, the guys tell me a lot is you don't date. Like dating doesn't exist. Dating the way that my parents dated, like it doesn't exist. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's like you just talk, you text, you hang out, you hook up. That's it. Repeat. You talk, you text, you, ha you know, you hang out, you hook up repeat. And it looks different for every guy and every girl. You know, I mean, we're, you're all are men in here, but every time I say men, we know it's for the women too, you know? It's just the state of what it is. Taking a girl on a date is kind of taboo now, right? I had, I was at Catholic University of America um, out on the East Coast, and I asked them, I was like, what is dating like here? I always, when I speak all over the country, I'm like, what, what's dating like? And this one girl looked at me and she goes, well, I mean, I don't think people really date anymore. Typically, people just hook up and then when the guy deems the girl like worthy to be like, taken out in public and like pay for her food and stuff, like, well, then I guess they're dating. <laughs> I was like, I'm like nodding my head in sad understanding, right? Like, is that really the state of where we're at? But it is, right? I mean, that's kind of where we're at. But to the women, I know for them, it's like, so I just sleep around and tell some guy to like give me attention, like the right kind of attention, and then maybe he'll take me out, and it's all backwards, right? So that's for me, 21st century dating. Not only do you have to worry about the fact that it's changing, 
but the fact that you have to mess with the world's idea perfect, it's messing with you all the time. For the women, the world's idea perfect looks something like this. You have to be like size negative two, beautiful doe eyes, long legs, you know, the envy of every woman, right? Trophy boyfriend, perfect profile picture with the, or the cover, cover photo on Facebook, like perfect. Everything has to be perfect because you judge and you judge them and they judge you by social media. And what happens is, is no one really gets to know the real person because it's all social media. And you guys, you poor guys, like World's Idea Perfect, I always get this image in my head of like a dude in a white tux with a gold grill and shades and he's like standing on a car and there's like women crawling up his legs and he's just standing there like this, right? Like, <laughs> it's the World's Idea Perfect of a man, right? It's Pitbull, let's be honest, like, it's what it is. Right? Who doesn't want to be Pitbull? I mean, seriously. <laughs> I'm, I'm teasing. But do you know what I mean? You have to be chiseled and charming. You have to be the leader of your followers. You have to, every girl wants to be with you, every guy wants to be you, and everyone knows it. It's the world's idea perfect. High school is like a whole nother, I mean, high school is, who's glad they're out of high school? Okay, good, there we go. So that's universal, guy and girl, good, okay. Who thinks college is a little, even just even more complicated on a bigger field, on a bigger plane, right? I know that the world's idea of perfect attacks you just the same way it attacks the women. I know that. Dating is changing. The way your dad dated, the way your grandpa dated is not the way you will date. So what do you do? I mean, I have guys come up to me all the time. It's so funny when I give talks, because especially like when I go into high schools, because everyone's like, you know, all the guys are like leaning back in the bleachers and they're like, Somebody shoot me, like chastity, someone shoot me. You know what I mean? High school, you guys remember, right? And then halfway through my talk, they're like sitting forward and like kind of rubbing their chin, you know? And then like throughout the rest of the talk, they're like leaning forward and their hands are on their knees, you know? And then by the end of the talk, they're like, feed me, like secrets to women, like help me, anything, I'll take it, right? Because where is the manual to date? Where is the manual for you guys? Like how do you pursue a woman in the 21st century? When I told the girls to pray for me, I said, pray for me. I'm going to talk with the guys about how to pursue a woman in the 21st century. They were like, how are you going to do that? <laughs> I was like, good question. I'll figure it out later. No, I'm just kidding. Um, how do you pursue a woman in the 21st century? By hoarding them. <laughs> hoarding? <laughs> um, okay. I think he said courting, not hoarding. Okay, good. Um, I, I, <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> my, I have a cold and I was like, hoarders? Like, you wanna put them in a building? Like, I'm so confused. They're not gonna like that. I think we should go with a different plan. So, um, okay, so you have the cold chiller just breathing down your neck. So. What do we do? Well, here's the problem. I was actually at a Focus Greek conference. Any Greeks out there? Yeah, Focus Greek? I love my fraternity brothers. And it was really funny because it was after, it was on like a Saturday night and I was out talking with some women and all of a sudden a bunch of guys came in from hitting the town and they saw the cute girls I was with and they decided to sit down and hang out with us. So I'm in this hotel lobby till 2.30 in the morning talking to these frat boys and hanging out and they went on to tell me all kinds of fun things. And one of the things we were talking about was they just kept talking about getting game. And you know, a little naive Kansas girl, I'm like, I'm sorry, what are you talking about? I don't understand. Could you tell me what this whole getting game thing is? And it was funny because they all like got really sheepish and like quiet. And then it's like, who's gonna answer? No one's gonna answer. Okay, I'll answer it, right? Ambitious. And the one guy goes, okay, well, getting game is where you just kind of like work a room and you introduce yourself to different women and you find out kind of what they're interested in or what they're emotionally like struggling with. Like if their grandpa just died, you just kind of tell little white lies like, yeah, my grandpa just died too. Or, you know, you just emotionally like get, you know, get in with them. And then you evaluate throughout the night which girl's the most emotionally vulnerable and that's the one that you zero in on because she's the one that you know that she kind of, you feel a connection with her and you know that that will be an easy move. And then you, you know, single her out and move in and close the deal and it's easy, it's just getting game. And it was really hard because, I, like I said, I was with some women and I said, do they, do the, I was like, do the women know you're doing this? And one of the guys was like, of course they do. They want us to do it. 
And I looked around at the women, and it was so telling, because like as, I, as they were telling the story, you could just see all their heads just like go down. Like, I, you know, just like they were, it was almost like embarrassment and like sadness. And I could just see it on their faces, you know? It was like every one of them was reliving an experience. You know, a weekend experience, a weeknight experience, shoot, like every weekend experience, they were reliving that. And the guys, when they said, like, the women want us to do it, they know we're doing it. And I remember walking away from that conversation, and I was just like, this is so backwards. Again, you know, just like, what the heck? Getting game and just how this all happens. And I remember thinking, it's, I mean, we have to call it out. It's the cycle of use. So I call it the cycle of use. You guys have, may have heard this before. Have you guys ever heard the whole like, men will use women, like use love or emotions or romance or feelings to get sex, and women will use sex, you know, or their bodies because they know that's what you want to get love. So men will, you know, manipulate or prey on women's emotions and, you know, their feelings of loneliness or their feelings of wanting to be desired or romance. They'll prey on that in order to get what they want, which is sex. And then men will, you know, or women will throw their bodies at you because they know that's what you want. And they have that to offer you, even if they think they have nothing else to offer you. They'll throw that at you to get what they want, which is to be loved. Or in most cases, it's to not feel alone or to actually feel wanted or desired. You fill in the blank, right? Here's the problem. Everyone out there, the whole, you know, the game of hookup, the game of getting game, all the games that are played, it's all disguised as love. But the problem is, is it's just use. Repeat after me, use. 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 Why do we not use the word use? How often do you say it to one another? Right? Repeat after me. I will not, I will not. use you. Use. And I will not, I will not. let you use me. Do you feel the power in that? What would happen if you were hitting on a girl sexually, you're like bringing your whole A game, right? Right into that, you know, think frat boy, we're down in the hotel lobby, right? Bringing your A game, getting game. And a girl looks at you straight in the face and said, I'm sorry, I can't let you use me. Bam, right, thank you. <laughs> um, boom, right? Like, so does this, tell me, does this text ever go out? Hey, like, you know, like from a girl. Hey, cute guy, I kind of know. I've just been watching this like six hour movie marathon and I'm feeling kind of lonely and I was just wondering if you could come over and we could cuddle for like two hours. Like, could I just use you to cuddle with you? Would that be okay? Like, does that text go out? With, does it go out with the word use? No, but has that text ever gone out? <laughs> Don't raise your hand. Have you ever received that text? Okay, good. <laughs> Nod your head up and down if you're following me. Okay, how about this text? Hey, from a guy. Hey, girl, I kind of know. Like, I just jumped on social media and was just looking at your pictures for a couple hours and, like, you know. <laughs> oh, social media stalking happens with the guys, too. Awkward giggling means it's true. Got it. Okay, good. This is what I get on my women about, but we know it's universal, right? Okay, so it's Saturday afternoon. You've been looking at porn for three or four hours. And all of a sudden, you have a girl that you know pop into your mind. You jump on social media, look at her pictures for three or four hours. You send out a text and say, hey, I'm just wondering if you wanted to get together later. I just want to, like, use you for 20 minutes. Would that be okay? Does that text ever go out? Praise Jesus, no. But yes, it does. Does the word use, is the word use in there? I want to use you for just, how does, you know, the word use is never there. But does that text go out? Absolutely. Right? So repeat after me, use. 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 I will not let you use me. And I will not use you. I tell the women, and I hope it's true, I really don't think there's anything more romantic a man can say to a woman than to look her straight in the eye and say, I will not use you. It's the most powerful thing you guys can say. It really is. It's actually the most romantic thing you guys could say too. Think of everything that covers, you know what I mean? It's just right there. So we're calling out the cycle of use, right? I hear it all the time, guy after guy after guy. And I know you guys are like really good guys, like cream of the crop is in this room, I know that. But I hear it from guy after guy after guy, and you may have heard it from many guys before, but I get this all the time. They're like, Sarah, like love you, love your talk, but you know what, like this is high school, or this is college. And you know what, I will be that guy you want me to be, that awesome man, that man of God, that man of virtue, the husband, the father, like I will be that man, I will. But right now, like you need to back off because I'm making memories here. Okay, like this is college, I have four years to live it up and like you're kind of getting in my way. Do you know what I mean? 
I hear it all the time. Here's the problem. There is no altar switch. Everybody, guys and girls, everybody, I know I wanted it, I wanted an altar switch. What is the altar switch? You know, it's like on your wedding day and you're in your tux and your bow tie that your you know, fiance picked out for you because she'll pick out everything. Okay, good. So, you know, you're in your bow tie and your tux and she's in her beautiful white dress and you stand before God and you stand before your family and everyone you love and you are professing your vows to one another and then you go behind the altar and there's a little switch, like a light switch in the back and you flip it on and you instantly become the woman and the man that you've always wanted to be. No more baggage, no more drama, no more pain, no more wounds, no more brokenness. You're just instantly that person. You're the most virtuous, holy, rock star, awesome person, husband that you've ever wanted to be. It's just flip of the switch. Does the altar switch exist? No. If you don't remember one thing from this talk, remember the fact that every single decision you are making right now, you are taking one step closer or farther away from the man that you really want to be. My question to you is, do you know what kind of man you're striving to be? This is the part of the talk where I like get on my knees and beg you. I beg you to entertain this question because I travel the country and I get lines of women, lines of women that come up to me and they're like, there are no good guys. There are no good guys anywhere. I'm going to die alone with a hundred cats. <laughs> I'm telling you, I hear it all the time. I'm like, you're not gonna die alone with 100 cats. Do you know why? Because I travel the country and I see the men that are out there. And I know they exist. I know they're there. But the problem is, is the world is distracting you with games. I love, I mean, my husband, you've seen him. Like, he, he and I went to Benedictine. He's from Ohio. Any Ohio people in here? Yeah. And um, he came to Benedictine just because that was the biggest scholarship that he wanted. Like, he got, he just wanted to play football. That's it. And he got his scholarship. He came to Benedictine. He, my all-time favorite Andy, Andy Swafford quote was when he finally came into, I mean, it was just, I'll tell you the whole story. Okay. So, and he had... He blew, okay, they were in France. Guy came in, slid into his leg, broke his leg. Freshman year, right? He was on the starting team, tra starting traveling team. He was like doing really well, like all this stuff. His entire image was just shattered, right? And everything that he lived for and longed for was gone. And he laid there in that hotel, that hospital room in France. And he really, really struggled with his identity. I'm sure a lot of guys struggle with like, what am I living for? And then finally, you know, through a lot of events, he really, he just found our Lord. There's so many, so that story could go on and on and on. But he said that really what kept coming back to him was the fact that he realized that the man that he was revolved completely around a game. And as great as the game as football was, there was a bigger game to play. And that's what I want to ask you. When I talk to guys and I say, like, what are your biggest goals and dreams and aspirations? Like they, you know, you guys might say like, well, I want to have a great career and I want to, da, 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 da. but then when you get really down to it, you're like, I want to find my vocation. I want to have a rock star, awesome, holy, excellent, virtuous, amazing woman in my life. And I want to have phenomenal kids. All right. Okay. So my question to you is why not start planning for that today? Why not? Why not say to the hookup culture and all the other distractions, like, I do not have time for you right now because I'm blazing a trail. Amen? When I was in college, it was really great. A professor asked me, okay, so like, what is virtue? And I remember my answer was, patience is a virtue. And that is the farthest, and that's all the farther I got, right? Public school kid, yeah. Okay, good. Right here. Yeah, we made it. Yeah, look at us, right here. Um, so when I got into college, I started learning about virtue. And I started to discover that, whoa, like this, this is what I'm looking for. The whole, like, what kind of man, like, I just asked you all, what kind of man do you want to be? It's like, I don't really know, right? That's a hard question. So let's start here. Virtue is striving for human excellence. Virtue is forming the habits of knowing and choosing the good and right thing to do. Virtue harnesses and trains your passions and emotions to work towards the good. Virtue gives you the freedom to love. Virtue? Yeah. Emotional virtue, the right ordering of our thoughts, actions, and desires as they relate to our relationships. This can be in the anticipation of a future relationship, in the midst of one, or in dealing with the aftermath of one that has ended. Anybody ever been in part of a breakup? Good, so boys break up with girls too. Okay, good, that's good. Are breakups maybe the hardest thing to go through? I used to give these talks in, to women, you know, and I would get floods of emails from guys 
And every single, most of the emails I get start with, so I just broke up with this girl. You are not just sexual robots, and I'm getting the word out. Don't worry, I'll let everyone know. Like, you have emotions, right? You have passions. Is that an okay thing? Yes. Heck yes, right? Here's the problem. Women manipulate you, they use you emotionally, and they think that they can get away with it because you're not emotional. You use women emotionally because you know that's how you can get to them, but no one calls it out. Right? There's a lot going on there. And not, again, do, no one in this room wants to use anyone else, ever. No one ever, like, we're not that kind of, we're not those people. We're not that people. But does it happen? Yeah. And a lot of it starts with this whole idea of how do you apply virtue to your emotions, to your passions? Right? Those girls that are like filling their head with chick flicks and love songs and, you know, like, do you guys ever heard the whole thing like women are more turned on by what they hear and men are more turned on by what they see? Have you guys heard that before? Everyone always laughs. I, gave, I was giving this talk one time and this guy like raised his hand in the front row and he's like, I'm sorry, ma'am. Men are turned on by all their senses. <laughs> I was like, I stand corrected. Okay, so everyone's turned on by all their senses, but men are pretty visual. Women are what they hear, right? Why do you guys think Fifty Shades of Grey is so important, so like um, popular with the women? Women, erotic romance novels are like porn for women. They would rather hear it and imagine it and put themselves in it. Girls don't watch movies. They are the main character. Nod your head up and down if that makes a lot of sense. Okay. I know you are Braveheart and Gladiator too. I know. I know. You are Mel Gibson. I know. I get it. Women will do that, right? I always say, if you don't believe me that men are maybe more, a little more visual and women are a little more hearing, I always say, if, if a guy is running down the street with his shirt off and a woman drives by, it's like, okay, dude, it's not that hot. Put your shirt on, right? But if a woman was like running topless down the street and guys drove by, there'd be fatal car accidents. <laughs> Point proven. Okay, good. The man that you are right now is the man that will stand on that altar, whether you're called to the priesthood, whether you're called to religious life, whatever God calls you to, that man is you and that man, that preparation starts today. I need you to take into account emotions. Every woman you meet is someone's daughter, sister, or friend. And they're counting on you. It is your great responsibility to treat them the same way that they would. Every relationship ends in a breakup or marriage. Choose wisely. Jesus is God, Jesus is Lord, Jesus has the victory. We all have a call, a call to greatness, a desire for it. We want to do something good. Now is your time. You could change the world, and the world needs changing, so get busy. Shalom World, God's own channel.